Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript and today we are going to be discussing the string object, the number object, and the boolean object. So let's get started. Now we've kind of done manipulation of strings before and that's really what people do. I've, I don't really see people creating string objects. So I'm just going to show you how to do that just because I should. I mean, you should know how to do it. But it, it's not really common. So I'll just create a sample variable and I'll make it a string object so new string and whatever you put in the parentheses can be it could be a variable that's already equal to a string or you can just type in a string directly like what I'm doing I mean I might as well this is a sample object and we're probably gonna want to see this so Uh, it's called sample. So I'll save and when I refresh the page, this is a sample object. Uh, now, what I'm going to be showing you for pretty much the rest of the string object part of this video is how to manipulate strings. And that's what we usually do. That's very common, but this so much isn't so much common. So I'm just going to make this variable a regular variable. And since it's now a regular variable, it's not really a sample object anymore. So I'll just make it variable. So when I refresh the page, this is a sample variable. Or it should say string, but eh, whatever. Okay, well let's learn how to manipulate this. So the first one is a property called length. Properties are the ones that don't have the parentheses afterwards, so don't worry about it. And what the length property does is it counts how many characters are in the string. This is very good for loops, for an example. Like maybe you want to check characters to see how many a certain times a certain character appears in a string uh, and you don't want the loop to keep going on past the length so like a, in a loop that I showed before I would say while i is less than 10 or I could make it i uh, is less than a certain variable and that variable would be equal to the length so that i would never increment over the number of characters if that makes sense it, it's pretty simple and I will show you well actually probably not in JavaScript C++ is more like the language I'd show you how to do something like that not so much JavaScript but uh, yeah check C++ out if you want to know how to do something like, do character counting it's called okay so let's refresh the page see how many characters 25 characters and just so you know it does include the white spaces which are the blank so so yeah with that so the next few are going to be methods I'll show you so the next will be the character at or just char at and then inside your parentheses you basically type in the index of where you want to see well what's the character at that index and it starts at zero so this t right here is zero so that i right there should be two so i'll type in a two and hopefully i will show up so i refresh the page and there's the i so it gives us that character alright so the next one I'd like to show you is the index of now what this does is it will give you the index number of the first occurrence of a certain character for an example so if I just put an I for an example because you have to type in a substring so I'll look for the letter I and it should give me that two back since that's the first time it's it's there and there it is and and yeah it doesn't have to be just one so I could type in is space a so I'll just type in this part is space a I click save and it gives me the first where the first character starts so it didn't give me that first I at two it now gave me the first I at five at index five so yeah that's about it for the index of next is the slice now this one's a little weird now what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in the start and the finish of the piece of the string that you would like to see so if I typed in 2 8 it will include the I but it will not include whatever the eighth one is so you have uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you'll see that this A will not appear I refresh the page Oh, whoops, I have to save. I refresh the page, it just says is, is. But if I make it a 9, then that A right here will appear. 
So just remember with the slice, it includes the second, but it excludes the second parameter that you put in. Next is substring. Now, uh, similar to the index of, this will actually print the string, the part of the string that you would like to see. So this is kind of like the slice, where, uh, where yeah, it's you just save it and. Now the difference, as you can see, with the slice and the substring, is it will include both. So I'm not quite too sure about why there's a difference between these. I don't know. I, I don't know, but that's pretty much the difference between substring. You use substring a lot more than you use the slice, but the substring will um, will include the second parameter when it prints the string. And let's see what else is there. Well. Um, the two lowercase and two uppercase. So you can type in two lowercase, and basically it'll make sure all of the characters are lowercase. So I'll get rid of that. And when I refresh the page, the T right there is lowercase. But I want to show you that it really gets everything. So I'll type in V A right here, so everything's capitalized right there. And when I refresh the page, well, it's still lowercase. Similarly, if I make it to uppercase, it should make everything uppercase. This is a sample variable. Yes, Mr. Website. I understand loudly and clearly. All right, and um, that's about all the different... Oh, wait, no, concatenation. Oh, geez, I almost forgot about that one. You can actually concatenate variables as well. So let's make another one. Var x is equal to... Hello. And let's see here. I would like to take the X actually and type in for concatenation, you just have to type in concat. Con cat. And then whatever you want to attach to this one, you just type in the other string. So I'll just type in sample and I'll click save and it should combine these two. Let's see. Hello, this is a sample variable. And there you have it. You can also type in a comma here and add in more parameters. So you can add in more strings that you'd like to concatenate. Just make sure you have them in the right order that you want them to print. And yeah, that's that's about it for that. So next is the number object. So let's we'll create a simple number. For x equals, I don't know, 653.22. Don't ask me where I got that. I'm just I guess I really, I just went down, look, 6, 5, okay, I, I, I didn't go, whatever. Okay, so, uh, the first one is the two string. I There's really nothing for me to show you with this, because I can't really show you how it's being converted into a string. I, I did in a previous video, actually, so this is a string, not a number. But I showed you before, when I was teaching you the parse int, so if you look back in the previous video, about that has the parse int on it, I, I can show you a much better example of proving when this is a number and when it's a string but this right here just turned it into a string but you can look back there for that you, there's also the two fixed oh yeah by the way these are number objects now we're done with the string these are now um, a number object and as you can see we're not r really creating an object we're just manipulating a variable using number properties and number methods okay so two fixed what this does is within the parentheses you type in how many of the trailing decimals you want to appear. If I just type in one, then I should just get one two now, which I do. If I type in like four for an example, hmm, well, I don't have four, so what will happen? Well, now they tacked on some zeros for us. Similarly, we also have the two precision. And what the precision does is instead of just the trailing decimals, it actually starts from the beginning rather than the decimal. So if I just type in three for an example, you would think it will have three decimals, but no. It just the just the first three. And it gets kind of weird. If you just do two, you'd think it'd just be sixty five, but they're gonna do like a, a six point five times ten, basically. Uh I, I guess this e plus two is supposed to mean ten somehow. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I would, I would think, that would be ten times 
or 10 squared times, which would be plus 100. I don't, I don't know how it's doing the math there, but that it, that's showing you the 65. And then if you do 1, then it's just, I don't know. Just be careful with that. But that's really the difference between the two fixed and the two precision. The last one are the Boolean objects. So let's create var in this, let's just call it bool1, is equal to new boolean. And basically it'll return either true or false depending, well, whether it's true or false. So zero means false. Oh, whoops. So we're going to want to write the boolean one out here. So zero should be false, which it is. As a boolean value, one is true. So there's our true. If we type in an empty string, we get false because there's nothing inside this string. If we put in a space in there, so there's now a white space, what do you think will happen? Now it's true because there is technically a character in there. So you can t just type in random characters as well. You'll still get the true because there's something in there. Then, for integers, you can type in a number like 5. You refresh the page, it's still true. And you might be thinking, well, what about the 1? You said 1's a Boolean value, now you're saying 5 is an integer. Well, it kind of is. It reads 1 as true, but any other number uh, that might be there it, it reads as oh there's a number there there's not a number so what so how do you say okay so if you can say there's a number there how do you say there's not a number well you might have seen this before if you've made like mistakes maybe an NAN that means not a number so if you refresh the page now it says false and just so you know that this is legit if you type in like G afterwards well now it doesn't mean not a number now it's just a weird thing if we refresh the page, now there's nothing there. So it reads not a number as not a number. And what does it mean to have no string? Or nothing inside a string like this? Well, null is the equivalent of an empty string. So if you have null, you have false again. And yeah, that's, a, that's about it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is between all these different objects. So I hope this wasn't too much. Uh, I really do believe that this should be a lot easier to you. Once you've mastered how to create your own object, the rest of this should be very clear. And, well, I'll see you in the next tutorial.